Hi, this is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper. And here we are doing another painting project. Not usually our main source of uh, work, but since we started out as a painting company, we still offer a full uh, interior and exterior painting service. And so for our good clients, we still render those services quite regularly. Now, what we're doing here is painting baseboard. Now, I have seen painters literally cut the baseboard without using any masking paper and they do really a really good job but you bend down like this for hours and you wind up with a with a back that's going to need a chiropractic adjustment so what i like to do uh because i have a, a sore back i like to use uh, masking paper on the floor because this allows me to go quickly and i don't have to worry about not getting paint on the floor because I'm gonna get it on the, on the masking paper. And then what I do is I run a bead of caulking right up against the wood so that I clog any openings, any breach where the paper does not stick perfectly well. You know on your floors, even in a very clean house, there are dust particles from your, your carpet and also your couch. All that constant movement of the air pressure in the room puts all this dust throughout and where does it gather? Right against your woodwork because an object in motion tends to stay in motion until it's stopped by something, right? So where does it land? It lands literally right up against the wall. And where is your wall? But at the baseboard. And so if you try to put tape down uh, at the baseboard without wiping it up, it won't stick. Secondly, if you don't use caulking uh, because the tape doesn't stick perfectly, there will be little breaches in the tape and the contact uh, that the tape makes with the floor. And so you'll have bleeding. And then all that time will be wasted having put the masking paper down. And so I just want to show you a quick uh, example of painting your baseboard with a nice angle sash brush. This happens to be a three and a half inch angle sash brush from Sherwin-Williams, from Purdy. Yeah. Purdy and Sherwin-Williams have merged. And so it's the same company. Now, remember you can go really quick with this because you're blocking the floor by putting the masking paper on it. Now, you have this issue now, the paint starts to set up. And so how do you do it? You put a good amount of paint on this section. You work in about four foot sections, right? And you go back and forth and this gets all of the paint in and out of the little nooks and crannies on your woodwork. Now you can't see with your eye, but they're there. And the last thing you're gonna do is pull it in one direction. You're gonna pull it in one direction and that's it. You're not going back to that. Because now the paint is setting up. And when I start it over here, when I come back over here, I'm gonna start the paint over here, not where I just left off. And although I can touch this again, I'm not gonna go far beyond it because this is setting up now, so watch this. I just go back and forth a few times to get it all in those little nooks and crannies. And then at the last movement, I pull it in one direction. You don't wanna be going back and forth when you're painting a flat surface on a final stroke. It doesn't matter, you can go back and forth. But on the last contact, you wanna go in one direction. Same pressure, same applicator. You don't wanna be using a roller and a brush alternatively. Like I said, you, when you're first putting it on, you could put it on with a roller, a brush. But the last time you touch the paint, you wanna have it in the same direction. Okay, with the same applicator. This way it's all uniform, okay? Now, if I were to go over here and start touching this paint over here, this is setting up, and when it dries, you'll see it. You'll see where you touch the paint with the brush because the paint is already setting up. It's getting sticky there. It's doing its job. So you only wanna to touch the paint when you come back and reload your brush, not far beyond where you left off. And so this is the point at which I left off. So you make a little mark there. You see that mark on the masking paper? 
I know where I left off. So I'm not going to go too far beyond this mark. I'm not going to go too far beyond this when I start painting the rest of this woodwork. Okay, certainly don't want to be touching any of this. A lot of times people make the mistake, they keep going back and forth over the sections where they painted. Brother, put down the brush. You're going to have to paint it all over again. And that's when people don't have the experience. Now, holding a camera, this is a little difficult to do, but I'm going to try to do it anyway. What you want to do is, sometimes you got to hold your breath, okay? I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm looking at my brush, okay? Now, without an angled brush, you cannot do this, what I'm doing here, okay? And so, you want to kind of hold your breath if you have a shaky hand otherwise, so that your breath does not interfere with the movement of your hand. Now, do you see the upper bristles on that brush, okay? I want you to take into consideration how few bristles are actually laying the paint down where the woodwork meets the wall. Very few, right? It's only about 10% of the brush. I'll do it in this direction. I'm only touching the upper part of the woodwork. So I'm getting those bristles, I'm riding them up on top of that, that lip there. I'm just pulling it across gently. And I don't want the whole brush doing it because then I gotta control all those bristles. So I just want a few, the forward edge of that brush, riding up on top of that lip in order to bring the paint on to the surface, okay? Now here's an example of what I was talking about. I just touched the surface where I told you not to do it. Now, you might not be able to see it here, but if you look on different angles, you can see where I've disturbed the drying process of the paint. And so I will go over that section because you wanna render a really perfect, uh, as best as you can. The surface, you want it nice and uniform. Uh, certainly I could load up the brush again, pull my paint again in one direction. Now this happens to be really good paint, okay? And it actually did it. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you going back touching it more than two minutes later, but it actually, it actually melted together. I'm using one of the finest semi-gloss paints on the market. This is Pro Classic from Sherwin-Williams. It's a really good product. It's very thick paint. Um, you don't add water to it unless, of course, you're putting it through a sprayer. But it's very thick stuff. It's really good paint. <clears throat> so anyway, this is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper. I wanted to give you a couple of tips on how to go about painting your baseboard trim. And so let's just recap. First of all, you're going to use something to block the paint from the floor. So if you choose tape alone or masking paper and tape, which is what I did here, uh, you certainly want to make sure that you block the, uh, the point at which the, t the masking touches the woodwork. And okay. the way you do that is tip number two, you use caulking. And this yeah. is clear caulking. And it will block all of those areas. Now, the third tip I want to give you is that when you finish painting this woodwork, Pull the masking up right away because something called bridging will take place whereby your paper will stick to the caulking and the paint and it'll tear it off and rip the paint right off the woodwork. Even if you've scuffed it up and prepared the woodwork sufficiently, it'll take it right off the woodwork, okay? Thanks for watching. Spencer Colgan's Wallpaper. Do me a favor, give me a like and subscribe to my channel. See you on the next one.